I bought the last four yards of a very cute Halloween print flannel with the intention of sewing a dress. I love a good Halloween themed novelty print. But somehow by the time I got back home from Joanne Fabrics, I had hatched an alternate plan. Instead of sewing a dress, I decided I was going to sew a vintage inspired jumpsuit. Is a flannel jumpsuit for Halloween ridiculous? Yes. Is it kind of like a secret pajama onesie for an adult? Arguably also yes. Was any of this going to stop me? Absolutely not. So here we are. And this idea was a pretty last minute idea of mine. So it was a bit of a stretch to get this jumpsuit made and this video made before Halloween. Lots of stuff has gotten in the way, like we were on vacation in the cabin for a week and work. And we also adopted a second dog. Say hello to Betty. So I just haven't had time to sew again until now. For this jumpsuit, you'll get to watch me muddle through my ideas and my creative plans to work out how I'm going to hack together and sew this jumpsuit. It's not a last minute project without needing to pull out three patterns to hack them together on the fly while throwing out all of your usual pattern tracing and construction methods out the window. So let's make this spooky jumpsuit. Okay, so this jumble of stuff is me trying to figure out what I want to do here. So this is my current thinking. I used Butterick B5748, this reproduction 1960 pattern. I used the bodice to make a plaid jumper. I'll link that video in the description. And I'm going to use that version of this bodice. And I'm going to hack that together with the pant legs of Simplicity 3688, which is another repro pattern from the 1940s. And I'm going to make sort of a wide-legged jumper. Now, I do think maybe I kind of want a little bit of pocket action, so I think I may try and borrow the little front kind of slash pockets from Butterick B5895, which is out of print. Uh, this is actually what that shape is. I might use a shape or something slightly different. So the thing is, I, <laughs> I don't really want to trace this off onto new pattern pieces to kind of merge things together. And I realized that actually, cause I, I don't wear wide legged pants normally, but I've used this pattern to make a pair of like beach pajama, kind of palazzo pants and a pair of lounge pants. But the last version I had cut out just normally was actually a size too large. So I, I'm thinking that I'm going to figure out a way to kind of cut this all out without actually doing correct pattern pieces for this all, which is very unlike me, but you know, this is a Halloween item. I'm not going to wear it that many times a year and I'll take notes. So if I actually think that this turns out to be a cool idea, I could do it again. But I think I'm going to try and figure out a way to wing this just by cutting things out and then trimming off a bit off the pattern pieces and then adding in the, I don't even know where I lost it. I lost it. Adding in the little cutout shape, well, taking away the cutout shape and doing a facing. And then I think for the bodice, I might even need to maybe lengthen it a smidge because it won't be a waistline of a dress. It'll be a waistline of a jumpsuit. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I guess, you know, we're, we're going to find out this will, this will work marvelously or it won't, but it's sure going to be funny and enjoyable in the process. So let's see what happens. Okay. So I have my pant leg pieces, which <laughs> clearly I have not sewed this pattern for ages as is because these are not trace versions. These are actually the cutout version of the original pattern. And then I have my traced off versions of my jumper top version of Butterick B5748. And basically what I need to do is decide how do I want this extremely horizontal <laughs> print to run. And obviously you're looking at it sideways and I'm looking at it sideways and, and you're kind of seeing me do this live. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not you really sure what I'm going to do here, but I do know that because it's so horizontal, I have to think through basically where the waist seam line is going to be. And that is somewhat tricky because I might want to lengthen the bodice just a smidgen. And so, you know, theoretically I'd like the waistline to fall 
right in the middle of one of these, but it might be kind of like slightly off upper or lower of center. I, I'm just going to kind of have to deal with that. I might do a belt for this. I don't know. I don't know yet. This is all on the fly, obviously, making up decisions as I go. But basically what I would like to kind of figure out is if I put the waistline seam about the center, where does that leave me for the rest of the bodice? And I actually think that that probably seems pretty decent because I'd end up with a big stripe up sort of at the top towards the shoulders and that's nice and then a few stripes on the body and I think that that would look good as well. I won't need to worry about matching the print on the front because it's cut on the fold. If I have enough fabric, I will match it on the back like I always like to do. I am sure not going to worry that much about it for the pant legs because I have four yards. I only have so much fabric. If I can even get this all on here running directionally, I will be thrilled. <laughs> I think I do have enough to do that. So the best I'm going to hope for for the pant legs is just lining up these horizontal black lines down the leg and hope that wherever I hem them, you know, it's not at some weird spot, like just below a black line. But quite frankly, these are just sort of like a loungy jumpsuit pants kind of situation. So I can make the hem slightly lower or longer according to where that black line falls. So I think I'll be, I think I'll be fine there. And then really, I don't really need to worry about any of the other pattern placement because I'm going to do that little cut out for the little pockets in the front. And eh, I don't know, maybe I will run the contrast diagonally or something, or I might not because this is flannel and flannel is super kind of spongy and, and uh, stretchy a little bit, even though it's obviously a woven fabric and a non-stretch woven fabric. So I'm a little hesitant to maybe do that on the pocket. So maybe I'll just run them straight across. I don't really know yet, but I kind of think I will figure it out when I start cutting this out. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start. Okay. So one more thing that I didn't think about until basically this very moment in time that you need to think about if you're going to merge a bodice with a skirt or pants pattern that has darts as well as bodice is how are your darts going to play together? And I didn't really think about that until just now. So on this pants pattern on the back, there's two darts in the back and then there's one on the bodice. I am not too worried about this because I actually think that one dart lines up with this and I don't care about the second one. You know, I could theoretically hack this all up and merge them into one dart and do all that. I am so not doing that for a Halloween thing. <laughs> so for the front, this is the one that I'm going to have to make the bigger decision on because the, there's only one dart on each. They are very off from each other. But like I said, I was, I'm contemplating using this version that I uh, made for a pair of lounge pants and granted that was for a stretch fabric. And I am not entirely sure if I accounted for that in this. So I have to, I have to do some measuring, but if I can use this for the pant leg that has no dart in the front, then it doesn't matter at all. But if I decide not to use that, I may have to fudge this a little bit. And so, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a neat little trick. So got to make some decisions here, I guess. I have cut everything out and done a little bit of prep work and I'm ready to start putting this together. So what I have done is I have interfaced my front and back facing pieces and I have sewed the darts in the front and back legs. I didn't press them yet because I kind of checked everything out according to the front and back bodice darts and kind of walk the seam lines to see if the placement of the darts on the legs were going to be roughly in the same spot so I could kind of line them up more or less. And I think that they probably are, but I don't really want to commit, commit to them yet. So I haven't pressed them yet and I'm going to sew the bust darts and then I'm going to take a look and see if I think the darts line up close enough at the waistline 
I may even assemble this in a sort of non-traditional way. I haven't decided yet because it's a little bit weirder with legs. So I may, I may do the front two leg pieces together with the bodice front and the same for the backs. I do this for dresses sometimes. I need to think through if that's actually physically possible <laughs> with pants yet because I've never tried it. So I'm going to start fussing around with that. But I think that this is going to be, this is going to line up really cute. I, I got the, figured out where I wanted my waistline seam placement according to the horizontal stripes that are on the leg on the and the bodice. And I have my little cutouts for the the side kind of slash pockets so I have my facing for that and the little cutouts and um, yeah I'm ready to get started and see see where I end up with all these darts okay so things are looking promising it turns out that the darts were actually fairly well positioned between the bodice and the leg pieces which is not what I thought was gonna be the case when I initially kind of walked the seam line so that was a great discovery and I think this is gonna, you can just sort of see the front with little pockets and the front bodice, how cute this is gonna be. Oh, can't stand it. But the, <laughs> the front leg pieces are assembled and I have my little slash pockets in here. You can see what that looks like from the inside. They just have a little black contrast for the facing. And you know, I just wanted a little pocket action. So I'm really glad that I added that in turns out that I did not actually line up the shelves on the pocket facing pieces according to how I lined it up on the pant legs, but no matter. I'm going to next start assembling my bodice and my facings for the bodice, and then I can start assembling this all together from the bodice to the legs. So I'm going to assemble my bodice per my typical method for a sleeveless bodice and you can watch my full video tutorial on how I do an all-in-one facing but that's what I'm doing for this method and I'm starting with the neckline and then I will trim and grade the seam allowances and understitch and then do the same thing for the armholes and then pull them through and then I am actually going to assemble this so that all the front is sewed together and the back is sewed together so that I can very easily take in or let out the side seams if I need to, which I might since this is sort of a mashed together project. So I'm gonna sew the bodice front unit to the legs front unit, and then I will sew each back bodice piece to each back leg separately, and then I'll insert the zipper down the center back. And welcome to the part of the video where I fix stupid mistakes that I made because I'm trying to rush through this project. This is the back pants of the jumpsuit. I am meant to insert a center back zipper here, but what I did instead was sew this seam, including trimming down the seam allowance that I need to do a lap zipper and serging the raw edges. So the way I'm gonna fix this is I'm going to unpick all of that and then I'm going to sew in a strip of the same fabric on grain effectively as a facing for the left pant leg so that I have enough seam allowance to do the lap zipper with the top stitching on top. I don't think the right side is going to be a problem and you know I <laughs> I hate when I make stupid mistakes and then I have to fix them but fortunately this is one that is fixable because for a second I was thinking uh oh <laughs> here we've reached the end of this project but no totally fixable just annoying time consuming so I'm gonna go fix this and then carry on with assembling I have fixed the center back zipper issue on the back legs I'll show you that in a minute but I just wanted to show you an overall view of this because it's so funny looking. This is the front bodice attached to the front legs. And these are the two back bodice pieces attached to the two back legs, which are then attached to each other and the crotch seam below the zipper, unlike how I did it before. So what I'm going to do is basically fold this all over and sew the side seams all the way from the bodice facing down to the hems. And what that will do will be that it will allow me to take in or let out the side seams if I need to, because I'm a little unsure 
Thank you, Iron, for going off in the middle of talking. I'm a little unsure of exactly how this is gonna fit, just because this is a bodice that I'm very familiar with, but I used it for dresses, and this isn't a dress, and I don't know if this is exactly all gonna fit really the same once it's actually an assembled jumpsuit. So that was my idea for why I am assembling in this in a kind of untraditional order. So I'm gonna do that and then insert the zipper. And here's how I fixed that center back zipper situation. Never mind that my darts are not quite lined up, but they're close enough for me. Happy with this. Anyway, so I added this strip just sewed inside the seam line so that with the turn of cloth, it folds in nicely along the 5 8 inch line that I needed. Now the raw edges don't match up, but I don't care. That's no problem. And I had already pressed this in on the 5 8 inch seam line, so that's how I actually knew where to line this up at the raw edge anyway. So you will never know that I did that on the left side. And likewise, you'll never know on the right side too. This side looks funkier now, but it doesn't matter because this raw smaller edge, it's going to be sandwiched under the zipper tape anyway. And again, I just lined it up where I had already pressed this on the correct line and no one except you and me will ever be the wiser that I made that mistake. And in an exciting turn of events, I have now sewed the side seams from the facing all the way down to the hem on the legs. And I have tried on the jumpsuit because now it is assembled and my zipper is also inserted and it fits great. <laughs> so even though it was extra trouble to sew it in this construction order, it fits really well, pleased with it. And now all I have to do is trim and serge these side seams. I will actually not trim down the side seam too much just in case I ever wanna let it out at some point in the future. And then just tack down the facings and hem the pant legs and I do need to make a decision about this. How deep do I want this hem? Because this line is, of course, kind of in a strange spot. So I can either hem just above it or do a little narrow turn hem, which I might do because actually the length I think is okay. And then I will end up probably doing this by hand because I didn't have any matching purple thread because I don't really sew with purple. So I had to do, to do the lap zipper with a dark purple thread because it was either too dark or too light and I wasn't about to go run out and get more thread. <laughs> so I will probably hem the legs by hand because I don't want to have a second line of kind of dark looking stitching here. Of course, it'd be really nice if I could hem it right here, but then that would sort of end up with the hem in a strange spot in order to do that by machine. So gonna do all that and then I should be done. Why do I keep doing this? I don't know. I did decide to just go ahead and top stitch the leg hems on the sewing machine. It's all the way at the floor and if the top stitching of the lap zipper is a design element, since my thread wasn't a great match, this can be too. And oh my God, do I ever love how this jumpsuit turned out. It's like 1930s beach pajamas meets a house dress meets Halloween. And since it's flannel, it's as comfortable as wearing actual pajamas. I am so going to have to make a Christmas themed jumpsuit now. And I don't know, maybe just a couple of normal ones. Ugh, this is so cute and so fun and somehow chic at the same time. If you enjoy watching me hack my way through vintage sewing projects, check out one of these two videos. And in the meantime, I'll be busy looking one part toddler, one part sophisticated vintage lady. Happy sewing.